Hey folks, give me a minute, give me a minute. I have forgotten how to do this. Hey everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. Happy Wednesday to you. Hope you are well and enjoying the blessings of the Lord. Good to see you all. Hey, Deacon Vernita, I see you. Thanks for being here. Happy solemn Veterans Day to everyone. As we remember our fallen soldiers and those who are still yet with us. We remember them on this Veterans Day. Um, good to see you, good to see you, good to see you on this Wednesday. Uh, Veterans Day, November 11th, and we thank God for you and hope that you are well and hope that you are living in peace and in abundance. We are just uh, a week past Election Day and a few days past uh, the declaration that uh, Joe Biden is the president-elect and Kamala Harris is the vice president-elect. Hey, Imara, I see you. Hi, Sister Laura, uh, I see you. Sister Ethel and uh, Regina and Sister Anita, good to see you. Well, hey, Shelly, Cherie, great to see you. Thanks for joining today. Invite others, why don't you like, tag, share, invite other people to join with us for this midweek, midday meditation moment. So much is going on in the world particularly in our world and here in the United States, uh, it's important for us, I think, to just take a moment to pause and reset and, and get our spirits together. Wednesday is known as hump day. And uh, today, this year, Wednesday happens to be Veterans Day. So for many of us, it's a holiday and we are uh, celebrating in the way that we celebrate holidays. You know, it's been, uh, let's see, Joe Biden was declared, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, were declared um, the winners on Saturday, uh, three, four days after election day was over. And that's okay. We knew from the beginning that it was gonna take a few days to count all the votes given this pandemic and how it caused many people to cast their votes by mail. Uh, that's what we encourage people to do, to be able to safely participate in our democracy. That's what they did. And it took a little while for all those votes to be counted. Uh, but the counting happened in that as it should and states uh, declared winners. Um, and um, they are now in the process of certifying their votes. And what they certify will dictate who the electors are that go to the electoral college on December 14th and uh, vote formally for uh, the next president of the United States. I was thinking that during, um, and you will recall this, during the time in the run up to the election, there were all kinds of prayer circles happening. There's 21 days of praying and I myself had a 40 day prayer collective of sister prayer warriors. Um, there were uh, other 40 day, we were doing a lot of praying a lot of uh, uh, petitioning God, a lot of fasting, a lot of um, being, uh, trying to be as much as we could centered and present in the moment and really trying to petition God with everything we have within us. Tell the truth, Lord, please, please, Lord, we need a change and order our steps and guide our feet so that uh, we can make sure that you are present in this moment. Lord, we're asking you for peace. You know, we were all praying, everybody, everybody, even the people that don't pray, were praying. Um, and it was a wonderful thing uh, to hear the testimonies and to hear all the comments about people praying and petitioning God and going and being intentional 
and consistent about praying uh, for this moment because we all recognized what was at stake. We all recognized uh, uh, the lunacy that had overtaken our country and our country's highest offices. And we all understood, I think, you know, that scripture that says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, that what we were dealing with in many uh, instances was really just uh, the enemy of our souls running rampant in the land and that it was going to take a supernatural intervention to ensure that, uh, to, that, that, that God and God's values were again placed front and center. And so uh, I was heartened as a woman of God, as a woman of faith, as a Christian, as a believer, to be in partnership with so many people across the nation and across the world who were praying. It was a beautiful thing. I wanna encourage you today, um, as we look into these next few days, and this is my thought, for today, you know, can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Because we have won this election does not mean that the battle is over. Does not mean that our prayers should stop. We are seeing the shenanigans that is happening with the present occupant of the White House. Uh, and apologies to my friends who don't like when I'm partisan, but I'm partisan today, especially I'm partisan. Um, when we see what is happening with the White House right now and how the present occupant is laying the, the groundwork for nothing less than a coup check the history of coups around the world. And the first thing that generally happens is the dismissal of military leaders and the replacement of those leaders with new military leaders that are uh, sympathetic to the despot. So we have all kinds of shenanigans happening in the White House, in the Senate, and, and, and other places that are complicit with treating this man baby as though he is a child that needs to be coddled and he needs time and he, I, that's a path I can go down. The fact of the matter is that we have a new president. And what we have to do as believers, for the, all of you who know as the old folks say, the worth and the value of prayer, to continue to pray and not let our prayer life be for a moment or for a thing or for a time. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, the verse that I'm uh, focusing you on today, simply says three words, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That's one you can memorize. Pray without ceasing. Now, when you hear that, you know, you can eat. How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to pray without ceasing? I got to work. I got children. I got to walk the dog. I got to cook the dinner. I got to see about the things I got to see about. How does one pray without ceasing? So I want to ask you to expand your idea about what prayer is. And I want to suggest that the when the apostle wrote this prayer without ceasing, he was trying to push us to an understanding of prayer as a lifestyle, not as a moment, and not as an activity, but as a lifestyle that we should always be in a posture of prayer. And what do I mean? I don't mean by the side of your bed or at your home altar on your knees. That's not what I mean by a posture of prayer. I mean, be in a posture of, or be in a position of readiness, of openness, of willingness, to hear and be connected to creator God. Having a spirit that is open to receive, ears that are open to hear and to listen, and a mouth that is willing to speak to, but also that is willing to be quiet in order to listen to creator God. That is what the apostle, I believe, meant with prayer without ceasing. 
It also helps us to understand that prayer, not a moment where you stop yourself and center yourself and get on your knees with all of that is good, but also that prayer is present in our lives and our day-to-day -day activity. Because if in fact prayer, the posture of prayer is one of connectedness, then that can that connectedness can happen no matter what your activity is, whether you're in the grocery store or in your car or on the uh, on the march line at the rally in conversation with other people in meetings you are still in a posture of prayer in a posture of hearing in a posture of communication with the one who loves you the most what does this mean for us in this moment of time it means one we can't stop praying we can't stop praying because the election is over. We can't stop praying because we believe that Joe and Kamala will be sworn in on January 20th. We can't stop praying because the check came. We can't stop praying because we got the contract. We can't stop praying because the children's schooling is going well. We can't stop praying because our spouse picked their socks up off the floor. We can't stop praying because we seem to have gotten an answer. Can't stop and we won't stop. Let's make a decision that we will continue to be in communication and keep communication open with the living God. Now, what's important, and we know this, those of us who have any kind of relationship with anybody other than ourselves, and sometimes even with ourselves, that prayer, that communication is a two-way street. Sometimes you talk and sometimes you listen. When we are praying, beloved, I want to encourage you that as you are pouring out your heart, your spirit, your soul, your desires, your wishes, your complaints to the living God, that you always make time to let God answer. Make time in your heart, in your spirit, in your mind to give space to God to reply to you. Sometimes we pour out our desires and then we get up off our knees or we stop praying and we say amen and we go on our merry way and don't give God time to answer us. God needs to have God say. God needs the space to know that we are listening, that we are expecting, and part, this is where your faith comes in, by praying, you are saying, I believe there is a God. And by listening, you're saying, I believe that God will answer. Can't stop, won't stop. Pray without ceasing. Make prayer an essential part of your life, as important as breathing, as important as air, as breath in your body. So I'm going to tell you in closing, there are four kinds of prayer. And sometimes our prayer encompasses all four kinds. And sometimes we're just doing one. And an easy way to remember this is acts of prayer, A-C-T-S, acts of prayer. A, the prayer of adoration. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord God, my creator. Here are all the ways that I love you and all the reasons why I love you. Prayers of adoration. Prayers of confession, where we lay out our wrongdoing before God and say and ask the Lord to forgive us, ask the Lord to make us better, ask the Lord to redirect us and reshape us, where we acknowledge God already knows what you did. Sometimes we got to acknowledge to our own self that I was cranky in that conversation, that I was short tempered, that I was mean that I didn't do what I should have done, that I wasn't, I, I didn't treat my neighbor as myself in that moment, that I didn't value the people in my life. And I, I, I'm not dealing with the Rip Ron says, and I'm talking about the things that we, we could have done that we didn't do, or the things we did that we shouldn't have done. Acts of confession, adoration, confession. The third is thanksgiving. Prayers of thanksgiving. Now, I don't even need to tell you what that is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We won this election. 
Thank you, Lord, I have a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord, I got food in my refrigerator. Thank you, Lord, I got kind of half a piece of peace in my mind. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you, Lord, for my friends. Thank you, Lord, that I'm safe. Thank you, Lord, that I'm loved. Thank you, Lord, that you love me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The small things and the big things. Tell the Lord, thank you. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and the last is supplication. Those are the prayers of requests. What are you asking for from God? What are you seeking God for? What are the things you want to lay at God's feet as needs? And not just needs, but desires. God is interested in fulfilling both, both your needs and your desires. Prayers of supplication lay those requests at the throne of God for God to respond. These are acts of prayer, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. Sometimes we go to God with just one of these. Sometimes our prayer encompasses all of these. The point is, beloved, my midday, midweek meditation for you is to pray without ceasing. Can't stop? won't stop. Commit yourself to a lifestyle of prayer. Some prayers are made on our knees. Some prayers are made with our feet. Voting may be an act of prayer. Staying connected to the living God, making the intentional time to speak with God, but also allowing the time for God to speak to you, living in understanding and expectation that God will answer, that God is listening, God hears, and God desires to answer. Because most of all, what God wants is to be in relationship with you, to know you and for you to know God personally, up close, being wrapped up and tied up and tangled up in relationship with the one who loves you the most. We need constant prayer at this moment in our history, this moment in our families, this moment in our friendships, this moment in this COVID, in these COVID streets, this moment in our nation's history, this moment in our hearts and our personal lives. We need to learn how to be in continual, constant prayer. So I leave you where we started. Pray without ceasing. Make, it a, make a commitment to yourself. Make a commitment to your family. Make a commitment to God that you will develop and adopt a lifestyle of prayer. That your prayer posture, no matter the posture of your body, your, the posture of your spirit, will be one that is connected all the time and always to the one who loves you the most. The Lord bless you. The Lord protect you. The Lord guide your day. I hope you have a restful, wonderful day today for those who are celebrating the holiday or commemorating the holiday. And for those who are not, I pray that you find just a little bit of peace in the day. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. The Lord love you. The Lord bless you, your day, your week, and we'll see you next week on the Wednesday Word. God bless you.